Check him out. Look at him. Not even scared of me or nothing. Let's get a little closer here. He hasn't gone in his shell. He was eating. I was hoping to get him eating. He was just chomping down on that grass right there. And then, of course, then you look right over here. Check this guy out. Two turtles. I mean, usually sometimes I don't get here and I don't see a turtle at all. Now, he's a little more shy. He's going in there. Huh. Watching the world burn. Watching the world burn. August 16th, 2024. Let's get into it. First story I wanted to talk about is the, I guess you could call it the Battle of Kirsch. The Battle of Kirsch. So we're getting more information on that, which is good. Uh, there's a lot more evidence coming out that there were entire battalions of NATO troops that were uh, in that uh, formation. And also it was a well-trained uh, well uh, NATO-led uh, or NATO, um, I don't know what you talk, talk about it, but you know, coordinated, okay? So they were communicating with the Starlink satellites. I mean, that whole thing was a, a NATO operation from beginning to end, which is insane. That means that NATO just invaded Russia. <laughs> Watching the world burn, right? We just invaded Russia, because there were uh, supposedly US troops there, Polish, I said Romanian, but I think it's just French. So, Definitely Polish, U.S. I'm British. That's it. That's the four. So, uh, good Lord. I, I imagine some body bags are beginning to come back to the United States. But it's a, it's a much bigger battle than, than what we thought. I mean, if you watch my video, my last video, there was they said 11,000 uh, invaded. That's a hell of a force uh, with a hell of a lot of armor. Holy moly. The thing is, they had no air support. So, I don't know what the... What, what our governments are thinking about. I mean, if you're going to put U.S. troops on the ground without air support, and the Russians have air dominance, you know they're going to die. So our government, the warmongering Democrats, just sacrificed a bunch of uh, U.S. soldiers for no damn reason. Oh, my God. And of course, and we do know now that they were going for the nuclear power plant. Uh, they didn't make it. Now, what's going on with the battle is... Uh, Right now, the Ukrainians are splitting off into small, uh, I guess you could call them attack units, you know, squads of about four or five, uh, maybe taking a, uh, uh, a Bradley and uh, just venturing out, you know, going as far as they can, taking a TikTok video in a, in a little, little town and then trying to get back without getting killed. And, of course, the Russians, they said they're just hunting them down and killing them. Like I said, there's, this is take no prisoners here because uh, they consider them terrorists. Uh, and I don't know how many civilians they've killed. Uh, and from what I understand, I mean, the Russians are infuriated. I, I mean, I, I, I suppose it was execution style. But I did have a, a good video I want to show you. This is the most badass thing I've ever seen. It's a guy, uh, it, well, I, I don't know from the video. It's kind of hard to see, but a drone comes down on top of him to kill him. And from what I understand, now one story was he headbutted the drone. And then the other story was he took the rifle butt and hit the drone out of the air. <laughs> anyway, it was a massive explosion, but the guy walks away. So I don't think it'll get me a, a 18 plus on, uh, on YouTube because the guy walked away. There's no blood in this video. So let's check it out.
wasn't that insane wasn't that insane all right just getting back to just the uh the law fair in the country there's a story out uh, you probably haven't heard about it but uh they're trying to recall the george soros uh district attorney in los angeles and uh of course he's setting everybody free and we know where kamala harris stands on that you know she funded black lives matter to get them out of jail uh so she's uh defund the police uh person but anyway so this new attorney who had been endorsed by some republicans i uh, said he was going to run as an independent because yeah as somebody pointed out in california you can't run as a republican no way no how and get elected especially in, in los angeles so running as an independent made sense but then the guy comes out and says well trump is a convicted felon and he can't endorse a convicted felon and he's only going to endorse kamala harris and so all the Republicans that were back in the sky, <laughs> they're like, oh, hell no. So now they, they got two idiots. That, well, the one that's being uh, uh, recalled, and then, of course, the new guy it doesn't sound like he's going to be any better. Man, I feel for the people of California. I don't know what you think about or what you do in California, but you don't make any sense to me. Damn, I feel like I'm making a nature video. Here's the boss dog. And check this out. Another damn turtle. Let's get over here and get him on the video. Holy moly, this is like a nature hike. I've never seen three turtles before. But again, I'm kind of scaring them a little bit. Trying not to get too close. Boy, one time, <laughs> one time I was out with the dog and the dog was walking and this was, he ignores them now, but when the first time uh, the boss dog saw one of those turtles, he, he went after him, man. Of course I had him on a leash and then of course this, liberal uh, lunatic woman's walking by and she goes you get your dog under control you torturing that turtle you his dog wasn't anywhere near the damn turtle he was three feet away from the turtle i just thought it was funny as hell the way he was barking at that turtle but uh, of course i didn't let it last very long i got him under control and we got the heck away from there but that woman going you gotta you gotta get you get him away from the turtle oh my god <laughs> now if the dog was biting on the turtle <laughs> that would have been different right so, uh, anyway, the, uh, the latest on um, Gaza is nothing's changed. Uh, Iran is continuing to prepare for their attack. Uh, I know that the Russians are still setting up those, uh, those jamming, those GPS jamming um, electronic warfare equipment. Uh, for I might understand, it's the uh, S-400s. So they're giving them some of the best air defense equipment in the world. Uh, better than the Patriot system, for sure. So Iran, uh, I mean, even if uh, Israel launches a nuke, there's every possibility that the Iranians might just blow it out of the sky before it can hit whatever its target is. Now, I don't know when you hit it whether it'll blow up in the sky or not. I mean, that'd still be devastating. You know, it's a nuclear weapon, right? So who knows what's going to happen there. So uh, I'm surprised they're, they're taking so long. But if you think about it, every day that they wait, that's another day that the Israelis are living in terror. Uh, you know, Netanyahu's hiding, or his government is hiding down in their bunker. And that, so that's every, that's another day without sunshine. <laughs> you know, it gets depressing. I've been in, I used to live in Michigan, man. For a whole winter, you never see the sun. I mean, it gets, I mean, a lot of people just get really depressed, uh, you know. Luckily, I, I like hiking, so it didn't bother me too much. So, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to get the uh, turtles on the video. Talk just a wee bit about Gaza, nothing Nothing new to report there, no huge, uh, well, I'm sure they're still dropping 2,000 pound bombs on the Palestinians, but, you know, nothing nothing new out of Syria that I've heard, uh, nothing new in Iraq, no no missiles launched there. I haven't even heard the Houthis. Uh, now, I did, there was some news, was it yesterday? They hit another ship, uh, might have been a couple of days ago, uh, but that's the last I heard out of the uh, the battle for the Red Sea there. Now, you did know that we sent in a, uh, uh, a bunch of special forces into Yemen, and uh, the Yemen, uh, they caught them. I don't know how many it was. I want to say 80 or so, and the Yemen's uh, wiped them out, man. So there's, a, there's 80 more Americans dead that your government won't tell you about. So, uh, you know, I wonder what these families think when all these body bags are coming back from Ukraine and Yemen, and then soon out of the Middle East, uh, if we do go in there on the ground, which I don't think we will, I mean, we do have those Marines off the shore of, um, of Lebanon so that they can evacuate, you know, 
uh, all the Westerners in there, hopefully Americans first, but probably be Americans last because this is the Democrats in charge. But anyway, so, oh, and the other thing I wanted to report on, I mean, you do realize that Trump was nearly assassinated just two weeks ago. Just two weeks ago. And have you heard a peep in the news about the assassination attempt? Or, you know, well, we knew that the FBI had covered up and the Justice Department covered up everything. So there's no, uh, no investigation was done. Nothing. I mean, it's the craziest thing. I mean, it, talk about in your face, man. I mean, in your face. You know, they don't, they cover up the evidence, don't do it, and, you know, so that means they were probably part of the plot if you're going to cover up all the evidence. And in fact, I heard the kid's body's been cremated. So you can't even look at the body to, to uh, go, go back and do any sort of investigation. So they've wiped that whole crime scene. They, they, they wiped it out quick, man. Not a peep. Although peak prosperity, like I said, they're, they're still conducting their investigation and, uh, you know, they, they get a little bit more each time, but I mean, the, the evidence is wearing thin. When you've got a, an organization like the FBI that goes in and scrubs all the evidence, it's going to be hard to really find out anything about what really took place that day. All right, I got another good video for you. I forgot about this one. Uh, this is two HIMARS that the Russians uh, took out, or two HIMARS platforms. Let's watch that video now. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? I mean, wow. I mean, not that I would want to see American equipment destroyed, but I mean, you know, it's, uh, I tell you, I don't know. I think the Russians are on the right side of this one. I mean, if we were being invaded by Russia, I'd be, uh, I'd be happy uh, when we blew up uh, their high Mars, right? Anyway, that's just my opinion. The, uh, the other one was, uh, what is it, Bur Burkina Faso? That's the guy, I uh, forget what country, I'll put it in the video. That he leads over in Africa, he just told the uh, the World Bank or the IMF, uh, the United States and all Western countries to go f themselves. Said that they they don't they don't want any uh, money from the United States or anything like that. So uh, and that was an interesting piece of news. The other one was the uh, and I'm not I'm not sure I can put the video up because it's got music in it. Uh, but the Taliban just did a parade with all of that $85 billion in military equipment that the Democrats left behind in, uh, in Afghanistan. So they were at the Bagram Air Force Base uh, doing a huge parade of all of our captured equipment that we that the Democrats gave to them. او د زمینی ځواکونو ملاتړ کوي هوایی ځواکونه په اوسني اثر کې د یو هیواد د دفاع له اساسي عناصر وګڼل کیږي اسلامي امارت د هوایی ځواک تقوی ترمیم او پراختیا ته کلک تعهد لري او په تیرو درو کلونو کې یې ګڼ شمیر څرخه کې او لته کې ترمیم او د پرواز وړ ګرځولې دي بنندګان و شرمندګان مراسم این کندک دوم تانگای زیری جاریدار امریکایی که در میدان نبرد سنه دشمن را مشکافت با 
نظم و دسپلین عالی و کمال احترام به مقامات عالی رتبه امارت اسلامی و مهمانان گرامی So that was uh, that was interesting. I'd, I love that in-your-face stuff, huh? <laughs> so, so that was all over X. A couple more pieces of news for you. A little warmer today than I thought it was going to be. I don't know if you're following the news, but uh, Kamala Harris, uh, well, she said that she would stop taxing tips just the same as Trump copied him on that because it's, it's such a popular, uh, I think, plan. But uh, don't believe her, man. She could do it right now. She's supposedly in charge of the government, isn't she? She's the uh, Democrat nominee. I mean, all she's got to do is just tell Joe Biden, say, hey, Joe, let's go ahead and get that tax off of the uh, tips uh, so we can do it now and one-up Trump, right? If they were going to do it, you know that they're lying. They're lying. Since she gets in office, they ain't going to be, they're not going to, Democrats have never gotten rid of a tax that I can ever recall in my lifetime. Democrats love tax. You know, they love giving their money to the government. That's what a Democrat is. I don't know why they want to give all their money to the government, but that's what the, that's who they are, right? So anyway, she ain't going to lift that damn tax. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was she's proposed price controls, okay? Price controls are not a good idea. I'll give you a couple of examples, you know. Uh, let's say you do freeze the, the cost of, of milk and the dairy producers can't produce it. For a uh, for you know that the price that the that the price is fixed at, well, guess what the dairy farmers are going to do? They're going to shut down their dairy farms because they're not profitable. So now you got a shortage of milk in addition to the price control. So the price control didn't do no damn good. Another good example was uh, New York. They have rent control in New York. Try to vote. Try to vote in a candidate that says they're going to get rid of rent control. It'll never happen. But what happens is. Because they have rent control, uh, if a builder comes in and he wants to build some housing and make, make some money, and he's got too much, because I think it, the last I heard was only you could get away with just 10% in the rent control category, and then the, the uh, taxpayers subsidize that in New York. But anyway, it does, doesn't matter. They're not going to build housing if they can't charge a fair amount to get their money back from doing the construction. So now you got a housing shortage. You see how this works? I mean, this is just common sense, and, but a Democrat has no damn common sense. That's, that's, that's what you're up against. These people have no freaking common sense. Yeah, you can put a price control. Well, let's say you price control gas. Okay, so the refineries, they say, well, you know, we're not making any money on gas. What's the point? So then, they, you know, they're not going to make any gas. I mean, what the hell, man? How can this be just so obvious to me? And it's not obvious to a Democrat. Riddle me that, Batman. All right, so I wanted to tell you how you can make a difference. So here in Florida, you know, I told, told you I was sending an email to the governor about the illegal aliens and, uh, you know, what, what we need. We need to copy Louisiana and, and uh, Virginia. If you live in a Republican state, I hope you're doing the same. Send, a, send an email to your governor, or better yet, write a letter. Good Lord, the old-fashioned way, huh? Put it in the snail mail. I think that probably means more to them than, uh, than just an email. But uh, anyway, but here in Florida, they said that they're not going to allow illegal aliens to get driver's licenses. So that's a step in the right direction. But, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about with the illegal aliens... Oh, by the way, there was a huge incident in, uh, I want to say, New Mexico. And I, I can't remember the nationality of the illegal alien, but... I don't know, he committed some heinous act. I'll try to get it up in the video when, when I find it, if I can find it. But there's, uh, there's been a lot of incidents that are going on around the country. But here's, uh, here's something I want to throw out to you. A little food for thought on the, uh, uh, the illegal alien problem. Now, right now, the Democrats are giving them uh, housing. They're uh, giving them uh, credit cards. They're giving them uh, food stamps. Uh, so they're being well taken care of. In fact, uh, they're being pampered because they want those votes. Okay, well, what's going to happen to the illegal aliens after the, the election in November? I mean, the Dem even the Democrats can't sit there and keep paying for 30 or 40 million illegal aliens to, to ride the government, uh, government dole. Sorry, <laughs> a little bit of phone problem there or a camera problem. 
But anyway, so uh, let's say they do take that funding away from the illegal immigrants. You're going to have looting. You're going to have riots in the streets. It's going to be us versus the illegal aliens. There's going to be gun battles, Roman gun battles, because their resources, they're going to want the same resources that you and I have, because now the government has taken away that, that funding that was putting up in housing, because now they're homeless, just like you and me. Now they don't have no money, just like you and me. So you want to think that we're not going to have chaos throughout the United States? This is what Democrats want. This is what Democrats want. They want open borders. They want chaos in the United States. They're Marxists. Okay? They, they, and they want power. They want to take over and, and take over the government. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the, uh, the monkeypox, or mpox, if you want to call it that. Uh, the World Health Organization is, you know, crying and crying that now it's spreading more rapidly. But I wanted you to do me a favor. If you've got a Democrat neighbor, buy them a box of masks and send it to their house and see what, what happens. I mean, they probably thank you, right? Make sure they got a mask on for the monkeypox. Are you going to comply? When they try to lock you down again, are you going to comply? Are you just going to go, well, okay, you know, maybe it didn't work last time, but it'll work this time. I know the Democrats will comply. That's why I say mail them a box of masks, right? Get, make sure they got their face covered. You know, that, that'll be good for them. Maybe tell them to start wearing them now, even though I haven't heard of any monkeypox cases in the United States. But I do hear it spreading out of Africa. Just wanted to throw that out there. The day of the turtle, isn't it? I missed a turtle back there, but I wanted to show you how fast these little guys can move. Look at that. Look at that. That's crazy. Well, the other turtle, he got away from me. Oh, I'm a freak. I scared him. I wanted to show you him moving. Anyway, pretty cool, huh? Forgot to tell you. <laughs> I think I'm living in a different state. I mean, this can't be Florida. It's a... Uh, it's a high of 90 today, and the humidity is not too bad. So you can see I'm not sweating the way I usually do. And uh, then I just heard on the radio, it's going to go down to 68 degrees tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, I don't know about you. I like cranking the air conditioning up at night. Even in Florida, it usually goes down into the 70s. So running that air conditioning, you know, it doesn't take that long. Plus, that way the house stays nice and cool when you crank it back up during the day. You know, you should, uh, in Florida, if it's a... 100 degree day you should have that air conditioning on about 85 degrees during the day hopefully you're out and about not home sweating uh, anyway there's another problem with Florida I don't know if you ever hear these stories that they just said on the news that uh, a bunch of houses in Ocala uh, had sinkholes open up near them and uh, the residents had to move out now they're blaming it on the builder they said he didn't put in you know in Florida the way that we build is you have to have a uh, kind of a drainage area so that the sinkholes holes won't develop and evidently the builder didn't provide that properly so I, I assume he'll be on the hook uh, and then of course they the, the city told them just to make a claim with their insurance companies but to me the builder should have to cover that but you know who knows I don't understand the law on that yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, illegal drugs for a minute now of course fentanyl you know, will always have to be illegal. You would never legalize fentanyl. But the reason I'm bringing this up is we've got, uh, uh, um, what do they call it, Article 3 or Proposal 3 on our uh, ballot, and that's to legalize marijuana in Florida. Well, I, you know, I hate to say it, there's a lot of good that comes from marijuana that I've seen. Number one, the hemp makes great rope. So growing marijuana, you can you you don't have to smoke it. You can make rope out of it, and that's how they that's why they got rid of it because they didn't want uh, who is it that makes the rope the nylon rope? I can't remember. I want to say Dupont. Anyway, they didn't want the competition, so that's one of the reasons they banned marijuana. The uh, the other thing is I've heard a lot of veterans. Now I, I don't do it because it's it's illegal. It's still illegal by the federal government, which I don't think it should be. So when you go into a VA and they do the blood work. They will test you for, for uh, marijuana. Now, if you're found to be taking an illegal drug like marijuana, they can take away your benefits. So that's a you know, reason. But there's, there are veterans that are fighting for, for that benefit because they say that it helps with their PTSD. I don't know if it does or doesn't, but I think that all treatments should be available. And the other point I want to get at is 
if you're buying marijuana off of the street, you don't know what they've put in there. I'll give you an example. Back when, when I was growing my marijuana up in Virginia, when I was a teenager, I would let a little bit of mold develop on those leaves because it gave the, uh, the marijuana a little more kick, right? So um, I'm not sure that people should have been smoking mold, <laughs> but I didn't think it would help hurt them and nobody ever complained. Nobody ever got sick, let's put it that way. But on the, the marijuana on the streets, it could be they have fentanyl mixed in or, or you know, some other drug, or maybe they put some chemicals in there to give it more kick. So I, I hate to say it, man, but I'll leave a comment. I think I'm all for legalizing marijuana. And I would even go so far as to legalize uh, cocaine or heroin. I mean, heroin's a bit extreme. You know, because I don't think anybody should be shooting needles into their arms. I don't know if there's other use or another way to take heroin. I, I've never done it myself. I've never done cocaine. I was always afraid that I'd like it too much. <laughs> you, know, you know, I did smoke marijuana for a while, but I quit that back when I was uh, 16 years old. So I haven't touched marijuana since then. But, uh, you know, things we're doing. That's another thing that ha I hate is the fact that, you know, everything follows you around. The rest of your life these days you know anything you post online all these kids they're out there tick tocking and tweeting and instagramming and you know and maybe they sent a a nude photo or uh, said something that they're going to regret later in life and it's going to follow them around you know think about what you did as a or i know what i did as a kid you know i i, I dare say if the military or the marine corps had known or maybe they wouldn't have cared i don't know i mean the nsa knew but uh you know, if I had to tell them that I was still, well, if I was still smoking marijuana, no way I would have gotten in the military. But, I mean, if I if they knew that I had uh, grown it and sold it. <laughs> By the way, it's a real art to grow it. I, I I didn't mean to grow so much. It was a, That's a hell of a story. That's a, that's a, That was in a different video a while back. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about the legalization of marijuana. So I'm going to be voting yes on that. If you have a reason that I, you think I should vote no, let me know. I forgot another reason to legalize drugs. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but the CIA is a, is a mafia organization, and the FBI, and they make a lot of money off of illegal drugs. They're in with the cartels. Now, you understand that, right? They work with the cartels, and the cartels have to, they pay them off. So there's a lot of corruption that the illegal drugs cause in your federal government. So we would, if we did legalize it, it would cut them off from those uh, illicit funds. And it's, that, to me, makes the world a better place. But, uh, you know, that's just my opinion on that. The other thing I heard is uh, Trump and Kamala are, are um, campaigning right now in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure that's a good use of Trump's time. I mean, I understand, and, you know, he figured he might be able to swing that state. But just remember, Trump, they voted in a zombie and a dead man in the last election. They voted in a zombie and a dead man. I think uh, Pennsylvania is just a lost state, but that's, and plus, and, and think about their fracking industry. They voted against their own best interest. They voted against fracking. So, I, you know, Pennsylvania, I think, is a lost cause, but just my opinion. Two other things. We talked about uh, Ukraine, what was happening up in the Kirsch region, but I forgot to tell you about what's happening along the, uh, the whole front line there in the eastern part of Ukraine. Um, right now, Russia is within, I want to say, two kilometers of a big logistics hub in the Donbass. Uh, so here, let's, let's watch a video on that right now. Now let's move to the Pokrov's direction where the Russians continued their offensive operation. And during the previous 24 hours, we got additional updates uh, um, from this foothold. The Russians established complete control over Novotaretske, at least according to different, um, let's say, military experts and different military mappers. Furthermore, according to the sources, the Russians managed to improve their positions inside of Grodovka and the Russians control around 10% of the city already. Furthermore, now we see that... Uh, 
the Russians are attacking, are moving to the western part of Grodovka from the southeast, and most likely the Russians will begin offensive from the northeast, from Novotaryetska, trying to attack the city from two directions and to force the Ukrainians to fall back completely. Furthermore, the Russians captured Mikhailovka, the Russians captured Arlovka, the Russians are about to finish the clearing of Zhuravka. So significant progress, the Russians managed to cut the death road, if you remember, during the just August, the Ukrainians lost dozens of vehicles along this line, and uh, after the territory was secured by the Russians, they captured this area without almost any resistance from the Ukrainian side. Now the Russians are moving their drone control further to the west and to the south, and now we have another death road, and we are talking about the road M30. In this video, we start receiving first vehicles that were destroyed as a result of Sudoplatov strike. The Ukrainians can't show any resistance. In Galitsevka, another vehicle was destroyed by the same squad so it's not we're not even talking right now about the death road now according to the russian experience and the number of losses they deal to the ukrainians we're talking about death areas and this is something like this too many vehicles were destroyed i'm not sure how the ukrainians are going to replace them but as for the replacements the western countries have already announced about additional military package that the ukrainians are going to receive so that that video tells you what's going on a lot better than i could so I just wanted to show you that, and I, the last topic I wanted on this video is let's hit the election just one more time. You know, I, I put in the last video, I didn't really get the piece of news to add in my commentary on it, but the, the Democrats have already given 11 million illegal immigrants citizenship. That means they're, they're legal votes as far as, you know, the states go. There's no way to stop them, and I bet most of them are in the swing states. I just don't see where the way they've set this up that the Republicans can win anything in this election. I'm just saying, at least not on the federal level. And then you also got, you know, all the illegal immigrants that are going to be voting in all the Democrat towns. I don't know. I don't see how you overcome 30 million votes. Think about it. Some states, 10,000 decided the last election. 30 million illegal immigrants voting because the Democrats got them in there. Just saying. Peace out. Stay free. So on the way back, we got another turtle here. Man, this is like a turtle day, isn't it? Let's get a little closer to him. There he is. He's kind of hiding on us. Wow, crazy. Anyway, quick story for you. A little bit about who Tim Walsh is. He took a grandmother uh, that ran a coffee shop back during COVID when they had the lockdowns. And uh, she's... Uh, got 17 grandkids with an 18 one on the way and uh, in a day of protest she served a cup of coffee to a customer so they came handcuffed her arrested her bankrupted her charged her with two criminal counts I think eight uh, misdemeanors and threw her in jail for 90 days so that's who Tim Walsh is that's who your Democrat and he had a lot of people saying that he's completely destroyed Minnesota I don't know why anybody would want to live in Minnesota underneath a Democrat, but that's, that's the way it is there. All right, I just wanted to add that to the video.